Welcome back to the Scrum, July 1st. July 1st. Took a week off last week. I'm sure we did. You know, if anyone out there noticed. They noticed. They noticed. I mean, they my cried DMs themselves were asleep. Still, my DMs were Damn. packed. Like, we, All booty picks. How do we get through <laughs> yeah, at, at Talking Sauce? Please, what, what more do I have to send to get the episode out? I like, thought you were about to say at Talking Sauce, please send booty pics. Like, <laughs> that's your, get like, mad yo. thirsty. Get mad thirsty on the scrum. Like, yo, yo, yes. <laughs> For the love of God, send more send booty pics to the that's podcast. Hilarious. Trying to get internet clout here, dude. That's I'm awesome. I'm not trying to be like DJ Academics, you know? <laughs> yo. That's on Freddie Gibbs, dude. Just putting going that kid in. through the ringer. Dude, he's going in on Instagram, too. Like, I know, oh, I I bet. Know, you don't have an Instagram. He's posting nah. just fucking. Oh, it's so good. Dude. He's hitting all markets. He's all hitting markets. all demographics. Going, Fuck going academics. Hard. And no one else in like hip hop really fucks with academics like that. You know what I'm saying? So, Nobody. Like, every, like, you know, he's like DJ Vlad. It's like he, he, a certain tier of like the industry fucks with him because it's exposure. But then above that, everyone's like, yeah, no, fuck that. And the worst part about it is, is Vlad has infinite more respect. Oh, for sure. Than in yeah, academics. Yeah, yeah. Than in academics. academics. That's academics has has like joe budden to thank for where he's at right now he had his little internet shit there for a while you know what i'm saying it was, was all like that it was like war and chirac stuff yeah it was, was, it it. was all just, he was big he was like big on youtube that culture on youtube and everything and then he got on that show with joe budden and fucking that skyrocketed now he's talking hot to freddie gibbs and, and now shit, and now he's the famous guy on that the most famous guy on that show yeah which is bad like yeah, that's bad because who's the is it wayno or whatever i know he's like I, He's big. He's he's big. He's been big in the music industry, and the only reason I right. know that is because they've talked about him on the Joe Budden podcast. Like they've talked about no, how, exactly how long he's been around and all that shit in the Joe Budden. He's podcast. been around for a minute, but I can't tell you who or what he's been involved no. with. It's, it's a name all, you just all know. A and R, A and R behind the scenes shit. I'm sure. Right. It's just like Which obviously, shouts out those guys. Yeah, but like, public public on. recognition. The like it, complex his audience knows academics more than they know Wayno. I'm sure. You know? Do they know uh what's her Nadeska? She's more yeah. famous yeah. than Wayno. Yeah. <laughs> on like on like a social media like yeah, yeah, here yeah, I am yeah. right now type of front. Uh-huh. Another th- I mean both of them low key, th- their public personas I think they gotta thank Joe Budden for. TB He literally he literally made their careers this sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Made that show and but now, now he's. I mean, I tuned into I tuned into interviews of that show when Joe Budden was on it. Yeah. Same. And then I also clips it. of yeah, or clips of uh, people getting uh, getting spicy with act too. I would watch. Yeah, those. yeah, yeah. I that's how I got into the Joe Budden podcast. Was I Facts. watched on? I watched Everyday Struggle first. I was in like college and shit. It was getting pushed to my YouTube, and yeah. fu- and then like he left, and I was like, well, like I didn't really know about Joe Budden's music. I knew like Joe Budden like was obviously a member of Slaughterhouse. Yeah, probably like my least favorite member of Slaughterhouse. If you could even like put him in tears. And then, the, yeah, then you, like, hear him as a personality. Yeah. You see uh, Juice from Flatbush Zombies put out, like, a whole thing today. Because they, they – it was, like, uh, in commemoration of a, of a big theater or something they sold out. And it was, like, a – he was saying how, like, he was going back. He's, like, we got brought on as a very last-minute opener, whatever year it was, when Slaughterhouse was uh, – their headlining he was like everyone was mad cool except joe he wouldn't even like give us he was like he wouldn't even shake my hand or nothing <laughs> and then he was like he was like but i'm kidding or whatever he was like but and now here we are x number of years later selling it out he was like i wonder when the last time like joe sold something out he was like oh, i'm just being petty though it was <laughs> it was dude that was a long ass time ago yeah if slaughterhouse yeah. was Selling yeah. out whatever it was, yeah. That's a and, long fucking time ago. Yeah, it was just so funny. That's but, crazy. Flatbush has been around for a minute. For real. We Pop talk hip hop all day long. Um, there's something else I was gonna say in regards to. Well, it's July. It's my birthday month. It's uh Canada Day. Happy Canada Day on I'm the day of recording. My birthday month. <laughs> <laughs> what What is Canada Day? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's their fourth of july or i'm not that's I'm a little sure, sus i'm not sure let's you, you know what sus. you know what let's look up canada day this is so fucked up that we're having to do this like live no it's video. not why the what? fuck should we know what canada day is just because we like hockey that's bullshit so july for oh yeah no we this is we shouldn't we really don't care about this at all do we july 1st commemorates the joining of canada's original three provinces nova scotia new brunswick 
and the Canada province, which is now Ontario and Quebec. Man, I bet you a lot of Canadians. In 1867. A lot of Canadians don't even know that, dude. <laughs> they, I'm just, they know it's a holiday that. and they don't know like well, i'm really not sure i think you know i don't know they say happy Canada Day, fly the flag Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's 1867 you know that's it's not that long ago maybe they, it's probably still pretty fresh in there he goes it's not that long ago <laughs> it's really not it's really not it's really, it's really, really not I mean, um it's not even 200 years ago right shouts out canadians man shouts out canadians shouts out chris hockey nc I'm sure, yeah, hopefully he watches this you know don't get offended by our lack of knowledge we're just ignorant I'm just ignorant like <laughs> admittedly like very admittedly like but we are um, the experts yeah, always a little bit of stuff going on you know what i'm saying a little yep. stuff going on in the hockey news just to keep it at the whole talking about return to play um a lot of stuff's going on with cba discussions and with that i think the, the same the same folks are, are highly uh, interested and, and motivated to talk about the league coming back to play as soon as possible uh, in, in working with the return to play committee, right? The groups mm-hmm. of players that are involved with that. It, it, sorry. So looking back at the podcast, we talked about the hub cities, right? There was four yeah. at the time of the I pod. Think so. I think so. And basically we're seeing now that it's pretty much all but confirmed or, or about narrowed down to Toronto and Edmonton. Yep. Uh, Edmonton for the West and Toronto for the East. Which right. does mean that Edmonton and Toronto would get home ice, but the NHL was pretty much like, you know, it ain't perfect. What are you going to do? Which I get. You know, there's really not I get, that yeah. much. Not sure. that much if they want to do it. Uh, What's up with this uh, no U.S. New, new U.S. arena? There? What's going on? I, th- I think a big part of it was – I, I bet a big part of it was the spike in cases. I would have to yeah. guess. Um, and – because I know, like, in Michael Russo put out an article in The Athletic and uh, where he said that, like, Monday, Vegas was the shoe-in. Like, it was pretty – they had the hotel that they were going to do. They had we all said it was a lock. Up. Yeah, and it was like – and then so anything can change. But part of it also, from an economic standpoint, we were talking money and shit. Uh, Let's go, dude. The American dollar is, is like – American dollar is stronger in Canada. So with all the economic loss the league has taken this year because of the whole pandemic and the amount of money they're going to have to sink into setting up the two bubbles. It's more cost effective. They do because they, I, I was reading, they plan on putting like, like in the bubble. It's oh, it's going to be wild. Do like it's state of the art uh, gyms. There's going to have like theaters, restaurants, bars, food trucks, like. See, but like, my dude, 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 these guys low key are are the players getting like an all expenses paid resort vacation, bro? Like, is because <laughs> just because does the stipend stuff? Because there is a stipend system in the league, right? When you go, when you travel, like you don't doesn't the um, team don't teams give you? I know, like, because in the NBA and stuff, they do that, right? I assume there's something like that. I'm not saying they're getting rich, but it's probably. I'm just saying, like, comparing, like, you know lucratively like what the nba can offer versus that's the NHL. that was that's a big true. difference but that, that's, that's, i mean that's there should true. be if there's not so i feel, I feel like there's got to be something like you know some small budget of, i'm sure they just gamble it away in the locker room before games like <laughs> betting on whatever's going down who's gonna arrive yeah. first and shit but so i wonder if maybe does that come into play when they're in these bubbles but it know, sounds like they're getting sounds like they're getting a little more than they need yeah, I mean, like I feel them. We're talking about like being cost effective. Like, yeah, fuck. being cost effective. They're spending a lot of money, but there is, you know, all, if well, I feel like once you get into the, those numbers, that like twenty five cent offset between dollar values adds it, up huge. Here's why it makes a little sense, though, and this transition's pretty good because it seems like the majority opinion of players coming back don't want to fucking do it. Yeah, and the yeah. league ha- obviously has every reason to try to convince them to come back. Yeah. So if they can entice them with a little fucking, hey, look, we put this here, we got this here, you're gonna have this here. Hey, what do you say? They're like, all right, this sounds all right. Yeah. No, yep. absolutely. Because like, you know, just for like, you know, they cite mental health and all that stuff, which makes sense. But yeah, it's like, listen, we're not gonna lock you in a hotel room for three months while we, you know, pay you less and rake in the, as much money as we can. Um, so that, and also, I just looked it up. Fifth, I think 50% of the league is Canadian. So they're, you know, that saves a huge headache in uh, quarantine protocol, crossing borders and all that. Uh, 
And that makes sense. I mean, that makes yeah. sense. A lot of the and guys wonder, who reside in the U.S. are probably back home in Canada slash Toronto. Yeah, and I, but also I wonder, and this we're yeah, not going to be able to answer this, but with like the whole healthcare system in Canada, is it was is that a better situation? Like I don't. I feel like Fuck I feel I like know, dude. I mean the teams are rich. Like the, you're going to get. Are you asking me who has better doctors? Because I'm going to say America. <laughs> yeah. Times. Well, I didn't. Want, that's what you're that's asking a, me. No, I don't understand. I know that Canada has like free healthcare, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it works because I'm dumb. I don't so, either, like, man. I know. You, do, I know you wait in a long ass line. Do Do you? I don't know. Facts, I mean, bro. They're gonna. They're gonna be Facts, bro. Lines, right? Look, I'm not. I I personally do think healthcare in some ways should be socialized. If you want to use the word like that. But free to some, <laughs> Josh, to some you extent. You want to get political, bro? Let's get. Fired. I'm not trying to get. I'm not trying to get political. I'm not. But I no. promise you. I promise you. If the shit is free, there's a line. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Beer in hand. That's all I'm saying. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. I'm putting off certain health care because of money. I'm telling you that. Like, <laughs> like, well, like I'm not here to fucking try to convince anyone of anything. Like, this is from my own experience. Like, I'm dying because of because of money. Like. <laughs> So if it's free, I'm in line. Like, I feel that. I mean, I feel that. But back to hockey. <laughs> you, dude, well, you literally brought it up. But no, but I don't. But I'm saying, like, do does the league save money on all the testing and everything being in Canada? Would be I don't my know. question. That, that's a good. That's a good question. Possibly, um, right? I mean, yeah. Regardless, well, that's just it, man. If it, if they're if it's free, someone's still paying for it, right? Well, You're paying for it in form of taxes. I mean, and, and I'm sure since the league is like, it, I mean, it's based in the U.S. Right? Well, imagine like, imagine like the typical blue collar Canadian, like because of this, you know, and because of whatever amount of extra testing they got to keep available. Like, there's like some little, there's a little some little tax increase, and then he's like, "Fuck, mate." Hey man, he's just happy hockey. I'm throwing like shit at the, the wall though. I have, I have no <laughs> idea, man. I have he's no just idea. happy that. The players are back on the ice. I don't know though, but it's Facts. on in yeah. like the whole grand scheme. Cause like, you know, like Russo said, literally next, literally next week, everything could change, you know? Yeah. But those bubbles do sound pretty dope. I ain't going to lie. Uh, all the shit they're putting in them. <laughs> yeah, dude. Might, you know, I'm, my, you know, if you, I'm trying, my, if, I, if I was just a guy, like, let me get on that staff list, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, For if real. I was just a dude in the organization, like, I'll run towels. I'll, yeah. like, you know, get... I hang out in the bubble. I hang out in the bubble. <laughs> I just want the amenities. Yeah. For sure. Uh, um, I mean, I guess from here, it's all yeah. Kane stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. Speaking about money, dude, John Forslund contract expired. Uh, and, I, we were looking at the interview he had with Mark Armstrong. Uh, is that ABC, NBC, yeah. WRO? Is that a- ABC. ABC, yes. That's, nailed it. But uh, yes. he was <laughs> – Forsland said – he said, I, like, I don't want to, like, ride off in the sunset, but it looks like I am. That was the quote that stuck out to me, dude. I was like, oh. oh. And I guess nothing, nothing uh, set in stone, you know. They even said in that that – the agent asked for a couple more days, but I think there's a lot more that goes into this than just the Canes potentially or Tom Dundon potentially not giving him what he wants or what he asked for. I think there's, I I think it is a little deeper than that. There's Um, a lot to unpack. I don't think it's like, honestly, honestly, at the end of the day, I guess really, I don't think it's anything bigger than just Forslund aware of his value and wanting to leverage that which he has every right to. And me as a fan of him, I fully support. So it's like, I don't know. Things like this, when they happen with a guy like Forslund in, in the position he's in, like not position contractually, but like his job title, I find it so odd that fans are so quick to point at and, and criticize the organization because of any, because of any shortfall in that, in that negotiation. Like yeah. there's there's two sides to this, no matter which way you spin it, and the fact does remain. In similar, to what you're saying a different thread. Mark Armstrong had said 17 of 18 people resigned. Yeah. There was 18 contracts up, and 17 of those people were down. Yeah, the only one who wasn't down. Da- just just put it like mm-hmm. just to lay it out like that. The only one who wasn't down was Forslund. Yeah. Now I'm not saying I'm not saying he's not coming uh, to try to be on common ground. But the guy knows what he's worth. Yeah, let's, he out of the uh, uh, eighteen, he is the most valuable. You know what I'm saying? Facts. As far hands as, down, 
literally because we don't know who we couldn't really say who most of the other 18 are. But Trip Tracy was one Trip of them. Tracy was one of them. I know I saw did uh, Dean Chinoweth or Chinoweth, the assistant coach, did he resign? I know in a, if that's if he's part of that list. I don't know though. I don't know because I just in the you know reading about Rick Dudley. Uh, yeah, I do. I remember seeing that, that come up. But uh, back you know before still on Forsland, um, kind of lost my train of thought. He's the most valuable. Yeah, um, the only thing that because I get wanting to point to the organization because there to to be fair, there's a bit of a track record of us potentially wanting to not underpay. Some would say speculatively. Um, yeah, but but just so from that framework, I can see people getting mad. But I think that I really believe that Forslund's the next in line at NBC. Like I think he's already he's already doing some of the games. Like I think he is the next guy. And if may I mean if they're if they have a contract sitting there, they they've been in contact with him. Like you know, this is what we're paying. This is what we'd be willing to pay you or. He's just looking ahead to that. Like, look I at all the games. Point of view. Look at all the games he's done with NBC in the past few years. You know, whether it's filling in for Doc or just being that guy for that night. Yeah, they he does the, out. He does part of the playoffs. You know. Yep, he's, he does, and he does it well. We're talking about him here. We know in Carolina and better than any other fan base how good of a of a play by play guy he is. So good. So good. Maybe um, the best. I, I think that I think there could be arguably an argument, argue, argument for the best. Arguably like, one of the best, if not the best, currently doing it. Um, and that, honestly, that's without bias. I mean, yeah. it is what it is. I don't know, man. I it, you just the only thing you see, and it just frustrates me. The only thing that you see are fans getting upset at Dundon, calling them cheap, and there is a, there is some history there. I, the problem with the, to me, the problem with with that and the history of him being cheap when he's only pulled this fucking organization out of the dumpster, yeah. but <laughs> him being cheap is all, is all speculation based on the results of, of negotiations going South. Yeah. The problem is, is that no one is no one in our circles. And at least unless I'm missing something, no one's out here pulling out fucking revenues and expenses and going, well, look, yo, he still could have paid him this much. And he just chose not to. That's never the case. It's just someone saying, well, since this guy left for more money somewhere else, Dundon was the cheap one. Yeah. And I don't even think that just because that happened makes the other guy greedy. Regardless of anything, any individual in any situation in their career, regardless of the profession, should always try to do the most for themselves, their family, their fucking income. Yeah. And Forslund's going to do that. Absolutely. And fans it's, support him. I'm not saying fans don't support him. But also ease off the fucking team because we're only trying to do our part and meet him halfway or as far as we can meet him. Yeah. And I think... And, you know, I think, uh, like, he, the last contract he signed was only a year long uh, for this past season. And Seems I like the that, deal with most of our guys. I Waddell think that's something and... that uh, Forslund wants, especially with the NBC thing sitting, you know, floating in the, in the near distance. Like, it's right there. You don't want to be tied into some sort of legal dispute, and then you leave all fucked up, or you can't leave, and someone else gets that spot, and, like, you know, you're shit out of luck then, you know, and I'm sure he wants to have that big job, like become, go and throw his hat in the ring to be become, to become nationally like known as one of the greats, you know? And, you know, maybe it's just the way he looks on TV, but for what it's worth, you know, pretty young, pretty young guy. Yeah. And maybe it's just, maybe it's just cause doc was doing it for so long and you get like, you know, the image of him and his kind of his elderly, if you will, wisdom mm -hmm. of it all. And, you know, yeah, I mean, in the sense, Forza would bring almost a, a, a youthful, a youthful approach in a weird way. I feel yeah. like, and so to to your point, you don't want to miss. You don't want to pass up that opportunity. Now it could be his for decades. Yeah, but the, in the but to lend credence to the Dundon, uh, blaming it on Dundon thing, you saw in that Armstrong interview, you know, Forsen kind of saying like, you know, I th I think he wanted to be the Hurricanes announcer up to you know whenever he moved on to the next, whenever he moved up, you know, to NBC. And the way he kind of made it sound was that, you know, that it's, it's still like he wants to stay and then Dundon's not willing to meet him there. Well, see, the way, that's just it, and, right? And Forsland hasn't had a history of airing that, airing that, you know, dirty laundry, even in the previous co in contract news, you know, like I'll give he's very you, I'll much give been a company guy. And I'll, I'll give you that. Saying it is and to that, and to that, Forsland's often won – to specifically, like, I've seen him tweet out, like, that he will not comment on something. Yeah. So, so to your point, 
to to your point, he does not like to air shit out. Mm-hmm. And in this case, it would seem like he is. And, and it was is, such a small thing too. Like it was like this right, was him airing it out. It wasn't hear me that out. Scathing. Hear me out. You know, yeah. The guy also has an agent, right? Yeah. I'm, he has an agent. And does. in what universe? In what universe? Whether it's true or not, is a guy going to come out and say, "Yeah, I'm being difficult." Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? Especially, I especially when the outcry is only Forslund, please don't go. We need you. You must stay. Yeah. We're, we're lost without you. You know, yeah. when that's the statement, what other words is he even, what other words would he ever say? So it's like, yeah. I, not that I don't believe him. Of course I believe him. But at the same time, money talks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, he's a pro. I want to, he is, but also I, he just doesn't seem, he's not, going to not have a job too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't think Forsen's at the point where he would have to kind of resort to, you know, using the media I guess, in that I, way. I guess for me at the very end of the day, if Forslund wanted to stay, he could. Yeah. But at the same <laughs> time, it's like, if done, if you want, if Dundon wants Forslund, He'd go get him. Like it's kind of, it's kind but of that the might, same but, but what I'm saying is it might be a possibility. I think the possibility is much more like realistic, like financially realistic that we literally cannot afford what he's asking for versus us maybe. choosing not to pay it. I feel like maybe. that's in, I think given Forza, the pandemic I mean, too. I think Dundon, I think Dundon values, I think Dundon just values specific things and is a ruthless businessman and, you know that that is what it is. It's like he, well, if that's what it is, then it's fucking pulled the team out of the out of the fire. I mean, thus far. as you say, it's he's paying players, so you know he's it's worked out fine so far. So he's telling Forza, like, look, buddy, I want to give you the stars in the moon, but fucking Sveshnikov is up next year. <laughs> Dougie's up next year. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Canes yeah. fans, which one do you want, dude? Yeah, I'll tell I you know, what. Man. I feel really bad for whoever is going to take over. Uh, if Forslund does not return, I don't want to throw out he's gone already because it hasn't happened yet. But it's not bye looking bye. great. But um, if it's Jason Shia, dude, the internet is none too happy, and honestly, I wouldn't be either. I don't, I don't know who he's. I don't know if he's a Hurricanes employee or whatever, and if he works for Charlotte, I think he, he change... works for Fox Sports. I'm like 99 percent sure he works okay. for Fox Sports. Now. Okay, yeah. I was just because if he if he's contract with Charlotte and we take up with Chicago, it should dude. It would be such a big change this off season, like changing our AHL affiliate, leaving Forsland. And dude, like the broadcasts are going to suck a lot more without Forsland. Like, there's no question. Of course they are. He and, and Tripp and had such a good Of course report. they are. And that's yeah. the thing is I don't want to, I don't want to like, cause I feel like I stand very bluntly and, 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 you know, like a realist on this issue, but I don't want that to be confused with my, my passion for what, what the two, what the tandem of uh, Forslund and Trip bring to the table? I mean, it's like literally how I grew up with the team. I can't yeah. imagine fucking Forslund. I did a Hurricanes camp when I was young, and Forslund announced our uh, lineup. That's dope. I, the guy called my name when I was like a ten and he, year old. And that's the other thing, dude. He does so much shit outside of the outside of just announcing games. I know, and, like, and I guess for me, Buffalo Brothers, you'd be at the Buffalo Brothers, like giving away the free tickets on those nights. It's like that. He doesn't. I, he doesn't Community have to guy. do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, You're right. It well, seems like he should. Be, but, but but you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I feel you. Wanted, I feel you. If he didn't want hey. to be that that level of integrated in the community, I think he facts would be able to set his contract up that way. But it's yes, just, he you're, was. You're absolutely right. And he was such a big uh, face for the organization when a valid face for the organization when a lot of people were saying that we were not a valid franchise. Pretty much, you you're like, 100 percent right. And because of all that. Because of all that, I'm such a non-hater. I'm such a non-hater, dude. I'm just back here like, Forslund, dude, go get yours, dude. No, we'll, I want we'll be all to. right. I want we'll be to. all right. Yeah, he's, that's the thing. He's going to be yours, fine. Forslund. It's going to be like uh, – it's – We got trip. We got trip. Yeah, he's a color guy, though. You know what I'm saying? He's no, like, no. Settle. Settle, <laughs> bitch. Yo, these are unprecedented times, my guy. <laughs> These are unprecedented times. It, Everything's like, even, changing. Even to quote the Armstrong thread, one of the last things he had said post Waddell interview was that the result of Waddell saying it, the result of Forza and walking is part because of the pandemic. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I would imagine this would be a very different situation. We had finished 82 games. 
Yeah, but also going back to the media thing, Waddell's a gangster too. He's old school. He's gonna, he's out, dude. That whole, dude, that whole like quote was just, just setting out pleas for people to come back to later on, like, you know, the pandemic and, you know, we're doing our best. And I don't even remember. Dude, the whole I have, thing. you have a job. I have a job. Who's not fucking using that excuse right now? Yeah. <laughs> I had my, I had my mid year review this week. Uh-huh. All my goals, I said I didn't complete because of the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I did love anyone, it. I mean, did I'm anyone going, give yeah, me I, shit? Nope. <laughs> yeah, no, they can't. They can't. But uh, I did the same shit. My review isn't up yet, but I, I already, there's already definitely a couple of the shits I'm definitely not going to get done. But uh, <laughs> you had six months. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, a lot of it I did. A lot of it were one of the three things. Could, and, man, no one gives Cap. a fuck about this. Cap. But. Uh, <laughs> And then people leaving the Canes, you know, uh, Rick Dudley left. He seems more like, you know, old and wants to go home. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's done a lot in this league. He's 70-something years old. Buffalo has an opening. He can go back home and do his thing. Work with um, Kevin Adams again. Yeah. I think because he was I – don't, I don't think he was the contract guy. What was – his, was I'm not his, sure. He his was like an operations wars. guy. He was like a he was like a some sort of yeah, president yeah, yeah. of operations or something. I just remember when we hired him initially. Uh, mm. His big thing. I don't do know in the canes when we hired him. He was probably a fucking ticket guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he uh, he worked with Waddell. I got he had a big history with Waddell, and I think he was a uh, he was either like a contracts guy or he was a sc- a big scouting guy. I cannot fucking remember. It doesn't gotcha. matter. But um, yeah, He's scouting going. no scouting rings a bell. Scouting definitely rings a bell. It might that might have been because there's two there's two guys. The other guy's still Kropelka is the other guy. Kropelka is the contract guy. Rick Dudley is the uh, I think he's the scouting guy. So if Word. not, I sound like an I'll asshole. Buy it. I sound like an You're asshole. You're an asshole. Over our thousands of fans. But yeah, he might fans. he might go to his home team in Buffalo. Um, <laughs> big priest to Dudley though. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Him leaving, like on the face of it, doesn't look good for the for the whole Dundon thing. You know, just given yeah. given the Forza negotiations. But like, again, I think that I think that was a uh, he chose to not. He's like he stepped away. Like yeah. for me, I'm doing so that it. Uh, that's if just, you don't read into it, you just you, a fan. Anyone could use that as ammo. Oh, it's de- and, and next year it's definitely going to be brought back up like, when we when we when we inevitably suck. There's someone's gonna be like, well, you see, you guys change AHL affiliates. You, you guys fucking song. chase Rick Dudley into retirement. <laughs> it's gonna be a fucking nightmare. Oh, oh my God. but shouts out. Dude, that's just it. People don't remember. People don't go back and read. People just go. They just feel like have a one like strong voice say like, this is kind of what happened. They go, no, no, yeah, yeah that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's just the stat. It's just the fact that he left. You know. Oh man. Uh, um, and in that article, that's where we saw the Dean Chinawith or Chinawith. I'm not sure how to say his last name. Uh, the assistant coach may or may not be re-signing. I don't know. Uh, said his contract was up. I don't know. I do not know. But what we do know, there's a couple players that uh, look like they might be getting called up. Might yeah. get tagged along. Part of me, without really looking into it, you know, like who's not like who's not back? Like who? Like who's gonna be like? No, I'm cool, bro. Like who? Like who's hanging back in their home country? Like I'm not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we got we got. Excuse me, we got Lorenzo and Suzuki in the lineup yeah. purely because of that. You think that's the whole reason? Because people, I'm, don't it's do just it? I'm throwing shit out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going off that turbo quote. Yeah, I mean, for those lower lower tier guys, like you oh, know, and they're maybe, skill guys, or it's more Suzuki than anything. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, what I'm, what I'm a really fan useful of, I'm a fan we have of Lorenz, for though. I'm, a, I'm actually a pretty big fan of his. I think he's had some he's had some NHL time, hasn't he? He's got uh, – I think he got like a game or two. Okay. This, I think he's so. He's right-handed, is he not? I'm pretty sure right-handed. Right-handed he's like, centerman? Uh, winger. But he's like he's, he's like – he's like Fogel in his – in the in his the way he plays, the drive to the front of the net like that. Head down. On, well, just that on-your-back style, but he looks like he has much softer hands, which hmm. I think Fogel, the only downside. That's like Fogel, his biggest downside, yeah. Just, it looks like he's gripping that stick real tight all the time and – you know, he's not getting some of those easy goals. But Lorenz looks like he has some, some softer hands. And he's and he's bigger. I think he's like a, mm. I think he's like six three, two hundred, mm. something like decent size. Decent size dude. But there it's cool go. to see those guys getting the because they're at least gonna be in training camp and stuff with the team. And any right. of that time any of that time helps, I'm sure. Being around Very the culture of it. And you never know what can happen. It's a lot it's gonna be a long tournament. You might actually get to see some time. 
for sure. Um, and then Ned too. Ned's getting yeah. brought up. He'll be up there. We're what just bringing all our goalies. We're just calling because well, isn't that ECHL still the thing guys? you could have unlimited goalies? I think so. so. Pretty sure. Makes sense. Was, you know, yeah, that, man, that'd well. be a real shitty thing to. You know, we have, have another to, emergency backup situation. Dude, we have to have David Ayers play for us for the entire tournament. There's some Canes fans that are like so fucking cringe that they like they would like just be okay with that for just oh, like yeah. just for the look, just yeah. for the fucking look, <laughs> just for like the fucking just so they can't. I can't wait to fucking tweet about this. Oh, David Ayers is <laughs> whacking the. <laughs> like, That's God, a good impression, man. dude. Not bad, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know who you are. Um, <laughs> dude, but how about fucking Gritty? Speaking of knowing who you are. Dude, Gritty getting too big for his britches, dude. Getting for too real. big for his britches. Getting too famous. Hitting too up, famous. Going on uh, the newest season of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Is that is that still the name? Or is it just Queer Eye now? I think Queer Eye is the abbreviation. Okay. I think they call it Queer Eye for um, sure. I'm, I, well, maybe it is. I, bro. The wife watches it. But um, let's see. I have up what happened. Shouts so, out shouts out that uh, one dude, Jonathan. Yo, it's a bad bitch. The, so real. Van Ness, the groomy expert, he had his – he got – you know, he gets Gritty first. He didn't change a thing. He, uh, he didn't so wait, change wait, 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 wait. I, I need context. Was, was Gritty – was Gritty like – so like the show is – for those who don't know, the show is these guys go out and they someone either via submission or however else they find an individual – who who wants some sort of uh, they, they, they help them out and uh, whether uh, whether like they're changing their style or they're you know I think like there was an episode where there was a guy who's a a, a pastor who is homosexual yeah. and he struggled with that and you know they helped him you know find himself and uh, whatever they're doing it's a it's great show great thing and it's sick that Grady's getting involved with stuff like that yeah um but my question though was he like the guy they were they were hooking up like was he the guy who was yeah. the he was the, the episode guy. was about him. He, yeah, he was the guy. Okay. All right. See, yeah. all right. I needed that concept. Okay. Yeah, he way too big for his britches. Yeah, yeah. Like, wait, wait, so, wait, 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 wait a minute. This show should be reserved for people who like need it. <laughs> no, the Gritty, fuck? Gritty needs it, dude. Gritty needs it, man. He's they set no. up that they set up that uh that one room in the Philadelphia arena. Gritty was just beating the shit out the of rage people room? with bats. Yeah, he was just beating the shit out of people with bats. He was going crazy. That was on the show? Shit. I don't know. I didn't. I'm, I did. I only read the article, man. I got to be honest. I didn't. I didn't know oh, what happened until I'm, I read the article. I'm gonna run this episode back. Like, <laughs> I mean, I told you Jonathan's a bad now. bitch. Well, Monster. I'm about to ruin it all for you. So all Van right. Ness, the grooming expert, didn't change a thing. Said he couldn't mess with the eyebrows. Eyebrows perfect. <sighs> Respect. You can't. I mean, Grady with the haircut makes no sense. This is scripted Grady, bullshit. You know no, no way, dude. This was all off the cuff. Very real. Very real. The, Couldn't change anything. No, you like the way the, by, the, way like, the was Flyers guy, Sports Entertainment <laughs> Corporation <laughs> legally said you couldn't change anything, bro. Like, uh, so the fashion expert, uh, he tried on a bunch of different hockey jerseys, but ended up keeping the keeping the one and only went with the French tuck. I'm not sure what a French tuck is, but uh, I hope to see Gritty walk, rocking it from here on out. Um, so and then so uh, Burke, the show's design and home decor expert. I didn't know this show got this deep. I thought it was like yeah. just a change the wardrobe thing. Um, well, they got a guy for each thing. This one's they they, they reinvigorate uh, one's life. Like so, he gave Gritty a home space, a home Zen space to like go away, you know, meditate, all that stuff. And that sounds like like the one thing they did. Okay, it's a locker stall covered in orange fur with a large silver G hanging on the inside and a mirror, a big mirror on the inside. So he just. Because Man, he already <laughs> already wasn't obsessed with himself enough. Only way he can get Zen is to be surrounded by more of himself. Uh, and then the food and wine expert, um, Gritty turned him. Gritty just made him eat cheesesteaks. <laughs> and the guy was trying to get him healthier. And Gritty, I guess, went full cookie monster. Was, was this like a cheesecake. short or was this like an actual episode? Well, There's two things are happening here. Two things are happening. Either one, that show's ran out of ideas. It was said for season five of Queer. I think it is called just Queer Eye on Netflix. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it seems like. Yeah, the whole season takes place in Shouts Philadelphia. Shouts out Philadelphia marketing, dude. The whole season takes that is place genius. In yeah. Oh, the whole season does. The whole season is. So they started oh, with Gritty. Oh, well, that, that at least makes more sense. Makes more that sense. at least yeah, makes yeah. more sense. Okay, all right, we're, um, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Yeah. So he just made. The made the guys eat cheese steaks. He's like, fuck your healthy food and wines. There's cheese steak and yeah, 
cheesesteak. It's probably all he, he just eats Philly. cheesesteaks, hitting people with bats. And the last stop uh, was the culture expert. And you're not gonna mess they, with Philly culture. They just brought in the Philly fanatic and was like, "You guys are friends." And the that's 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 what happened. I mean, I love it and I hate it at the same time for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> it's. It, uh, yeah, no, it's not like it's it's cool, but it's not that cool. You know what I mean? Like it's so... it's really cool. It's really cool that I guess you know, and what you're doing in this in, in a sense like this is, I mean, and shout out Philadelphia again, genius level marketing. You're you're bringing in a, a different demographic and a demographic you want included in the sport of hockey, yeah. and that yeah. I'm talking about LGBTQ plus community yeah. folks. It might um, be the most iconic. He might be the most iconic mascot right now. I can't think of one. Hands that, down. Like in sports, gets appearances are not. Off, like yeah, everyone knows gritty. You know, bro was on Kimmel and shit. Like, uh, like when's the last time any mascot was on Kimmel? Like, yeah, maybe yeah. the Philly fanatic. Philly, Philly's got that. They Philly, doing their thing. But, and, you know, they're doing their thing. Yeah, like the makes us look really bad. Like yeah. I love Stormy. I love Stormy. He's a pig. <laughs> he's a he's like a pig, dude. he's he is he is a pig. Just applicable in the least. Yeah, <laughs> like. Let's keep it funky. Yeah, yeah. He is just a pig. Shouts out Queer Eye. Shouts out Gritty, dude. It is um, huge for the league, I guess. It's just kind of – it's so pop culture that but I it just makes It hate. really makes sense that the whole season's in Philly. It kind of seems yeah. like you couldn't – like if they already had that intention, how could you not include Gritty if you're talking about Philadelphia? Yeah. I think that's that's really where Gritty is at. Like in, yeah. in, in that sense, Synonymous. really, Jacob, I disagree. Like not too big for his britches. This is kind of – this is a nail on the head here. Oh, he, it's, he's just following the path. This was the arc that was always going to – this is the arc exactly. that was always going to be. Damn. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, this I, is his destiny. Gritty for president. Dude I, I, dude, I think, like, now that we've gone through it, I'm kind of on your side about it, man. This is kind you of exactly what, what needed to happen. This is exactly what was always going to happen. If this was, like, a shot in the dark and they never did, like, another Philly episode or, like, you know, they didn't do – I'm hoping they do more, like, Philly-centric things, not just, yeah. like, citizens of Philly. Like, you got to keep it going, right? I don't know. Dude – Imagine being the guy inside the costume, just like you're su- you're super famous. You're but you but at the same time you're the least important part of the whole thing. Nah, disagree big time. You disagree. Think about like think about like every Twitter troll, every single every single person in the world who wants all of that, but not the hardship that comes with it. That's what gritty is, dude. That's what gritty gets to have. He gets to have all the love, all the praise. All the all the attention as that figure, without any of the concern of people coming for his personal life, his loved yeah. ones, his 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 home. Yeah, his, but you replaceable. You like you don't you don't get bank being a point. the guy inside the mascot. I don't feel like you know because it's to like because it's like with like like you know with Forslund, you can't replicate what he does on the mic. You can find a guy who now we're in spin. We're in, you spin Gritty's hips, you know. What we're I'm in saying? 2020. You you spin it good enough. You have a good enough agent because there's a lot of there's a lot of body gesturing. There's a lot oh. of body gesturing that Gritty does, and there's a lot of there's a lot of influence that that could have on that individual's ability to to pull that off. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're able to spin in such a way, like look at this hack. He can't he can't comb his beard the way I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that's the le- that's the le- like level yeah. minutia it has to get down to. Yeah. You got what you got to do. <laughs> no, 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 you gonna say? All right, that's the scrum. <laughs> did we do it? Did we do I think we thing, we did it. Yo, I got a question. Is this recorded? It's recording. Okay, I don't see it on my screen. So, so it's, it's so, on my screen saying recording. Okay, I was you really suspect. scared me there for a second though, dude. Bro, you, you scared me. Lord. But um, like we've been on here for hours. For, <laughs> but get all our shit at Talking Sauce Pod. No underscore. Respect the underscore. Respect. Cancellation Cup. Um, look out for season tonight. three. Yeah, we're playing tonight. Look out for season three coming up in like a couple months it, or so. It's, it's going to be a little while. But but right now, yeah, there was a survey out. We got some really good feedback from people about uh, about what we can do to make season three better when it does happen. Yeah. So appreciate anyone who uh, gave some feedback. Definitely. Um, there might be – I'm not saying there will, but there might even be a couple more surveys or at least one more um, before it's all so, said and done. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Keep a lookout for it. Uh, watch the games, J Cobb, J A Y C O B B B seventy seven. You can get me J A Y underscore C O B B B. Josh, where they get you at? Teebs, T E A B Z Z. You can get Cody C D underscore two one eight seven. You can get Dylan at 
I hope he edits this so he can put his name in. And if it's uh, not there, you back that. He you bags your mom. Four twenty X capital X. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. You can catch me on backslash fantasy girls anime titties. I'm all and, over Belle Delphine subreddit. <laughs> and hint day for dummies. Just learned how to draw it.